Here on Democracy Now!, I'm Amy Goodman. Last month, Pentagon leaders told a Senate panel they would ignore any unlawful order by President Donald Trump to launch a nuclear strike. The testimony came as part of the first congressional hearings in more than 40 years on the president's authority to start a nuclear war. This is Connecticut Democratic Senator Chris Murphy. We are concerned that the president of the United States is so unstable, is so volatile, has a decision-making process that is so quixotic that he might order a nuclear weapon strike that is wildly out of step with U.S. national security interests. We turn right now to a doctor who's led a discussion of mental health professionals who are deeply concerned about President Trump's psychological stability. Dr. Bandy Lee is a forensic psychiatrist on the faculty of Yale School of Medicine, an internationally recognized expert on violence. She organized the Duty to Warn conference at Yale and edited the book The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, 27 Psychiatrists and Mental Health Experts Assess a President. The book became a bestseller the instant it was published in October, sold out, resupplied, sold out again. We're bringing you part two of our conversation today with Dr. Lee, when I asked about her about the concerns that she and these other experts have identified. Well, it's actually historically unprecedented that so many mental health professionals have come forth with their concerns. Um, under any president of any party. So it really is the first time that this many mental health professionals are coming together in a coalition. Uh, we even have a website now, dangerouscase.org, where uh, the public and, not, and lawmakers can discourse with us. Uh, there are thousands of us at this point. So talk about Lay out what your concerns are as a psychiatrist. So our concerns are that uh, someone with this level of mental instability and impairment uh, has this much power in the office of the presidency, basically the power to uh, start a devastating war, to launch nuclear missiles uh, without any inhibition. Uh, you saw from the hearings that there is very little inhibition in place right now. Within five minutes of the commander-in-chief's orders, uh, nuclear missiles could be launched without question. And, and how does that relate to his mental fitness? And, of course, his decision-making capacity. Uh, having such levels of impulsivity, having a loose grip on reality, and being so uh, fragile in his uh, ability to cope with ordinary stresses, such as uh, basic criticisms or unflattering news, uh, will tend to unravel, especially in times of heightened stress, such as under the special counsel's investigations. Mm. Uh, just last week, Tony Schwartz, author of, well, co-author of Trump's book, The Art of the Deal, told MSNBC's Ari Melber that the president's inner circle is worried about his mental state. I know that two different people from the White House, or at least saying they were from the White House and that turned out to be a White House number, have called somebody I know in the last several weeks to say, we are deeply concerned about his mental health. That's Wait a minute. You're, you're saying you have knowledge of people calling from a White House line, raising that question? Why would they do that? How do you know that? I know that because I know the person that they called. And this is a person who I absolutely trust, who has great integrity. So that was Tony Schwartz, who I think ghost wrote the book The Art of the Deal, very close to Trump for a period of time. What are your thoughts about what he said? Well, as you know, he has a chapter in the book. Even though he's not counted among the 27 experts, uh, we do have three others who have been included for their special insight, their special experience with uh, Mr. Trump. And, uh, and we included him because he has special insight into, into these matters. And I would agree with his assessment. We speak often. Uh, we share our observations. And we're both deeply concerned. The chapter that Tony Schwartz wrote in your book, I wrote the art of the deal with Donald Trump. His self-sabotage is rooted in his past. Explain his point here. Um, well, there's actually a lot that's outlined. It's, it's a reprint of an article that he wrote, I believe, for The New Yorker. Um, he 
uh, outlines very much his interactions and experiences with the president. And he describes most markedly this uh, emptiness, this what he calls a black hole level of uh, self-esteem or, or self-worth that is missing, uh, whereby he can have all the admiration of the world, all the successes, and he will his thirst will never be quenched because of that intense need. And that is what we're seeing over and over. And his what is most concerning for us is that his way of coping with this critical sense of need at every moment so much to the point where he cannot think of the past or the future or consequences. Uh, his main urgency is to quench the need at the moment, and th the way he does this is by uh, burnishing his power, by um, going to belligerent language or, uh, or affirming conflicts and uh, others' sense of um, the world is a threatening place where you have to be violent. Hmm. This is Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina speaking about, well, then-candidate Donald Trump. This was back in 2016. I'm not going to try to get into the mind of Donald Trump, because I don't think there's a whole lot of space there. I think he's a kook. I think he's crazy. I think he's unfit for office. So that was Graham in 2016. But Senator Graham sounded different last month when he spoke to CNN. You know, what concerns me about the American press is this endless, endless a attempt to label the guy as some kind of kook, uh, not fit to be president. So that is Senator Graham now. Um, what about what he's saying? I think the um, laypersons, um, the public or lawmakers, uh, would be prone to underestimating the dangers of this president, because uh, most people are used to seeing uh, individuals who are healthy. Um, it's, it's only professionals who see those who are impaired day in and day out. And so the natural tendency will be to interpret what they're seeing in terms of uh, a normal range, a normal variation of human choices, decision-making and behavior. Uh, what we are, what we feel pressed to do is to warn about uh, the situation where someone is not uh, acting within normal range, where one is... <coughs> One is normalizing what is, in fact, a malignancy um, in, uh, in one's interpretation of Dr. Well. Mandy Lee that. is a forensic psychiatrist on the faculty of Yale School of Medicine, internationally recognized expert on violence. She organized the Duty to Warn conference at Yale and edited the book The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, 27 Psychiatrists and Mental Health Experts Assess a President. The book became a bestseller the instant it was published in October. It sold out, resupplied, sold out again. Um, to see the whole interview with Dr. Bandy Lee, you can go to democracynow.org. Also, earlier this week, uh, we played interviews with two women who've accused Donald Trump of sexual misconduct, Jessica Leeds and Samantha Holvey. Uh, who were part of a news conference this week in New York, calling on Congress to investigate the president of the United States. You can see those interviews at democracynow.org. And that does it for our show. Uh, happy birthday tomorrow to Renee Feltz. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Renee Feltz, Dina Guzder, Nermeen Sheikh, Carla Wills, Laura Gottesdiener, Sam Alkoff, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Hani Masood, Sharina Nadura, Amel Ahmed and Nat Needham. Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagara, and Paul Huckabee are engineers. Special thanks to Becca Staley, Julie Crosby, Hugh Grand, David Prude, R.L. Boone, Vesta Godars, and Carl Markser. And to our camera crew, John Randolph, Karen Meadows, Anna Ozbeck, Matt Ely, and Kaya Cirilla. You can also see our coverage of the whole issue of net neutrality, as we've covered it over the years at democracynow.org. And to see all of the transcripts or watch our video podcasts or listen to our audio podcasts, you can go to democracynow.org and tell your friends about independent, daily, global, grassroots media. 
Tell your friends about the Democracy Now! News Hour. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.